Good morning and welcome to Escafier Online. Today we are making some sausages. Nothing better than for a hot summer day to grill outside and to have some nice Italian sausages. It is actually very, very simple to make your own sausages. We have uh, plenty of liter literature out there. Brats and uh, breakfast uh, sausages and links and patties is, is tremendous. It is really not much different than making meatloaf. So if you know how to make meatloaf, there's only one or two steps more you have to think about to get your sausages going. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you a couple techniques and I'll show you a simple recipe. I cut that recipe down uh, by half, so the recipe on our blog uh, is downsized. So because I need, didn't need to make too, that much goodies here. So we're going to start right here. Um, you see this is coarse and white. This is actually kosher salt. We have um, uh, granulated sugar here. Uh, you could use brown sugar or uh, unrefined sugar here. That would be perfectly fine. Uh, you can also use LDS salt instead of the kosher salt, but this is basically a material to cure the sausage and also give it a little bit of sweetness, obviously. Here we have uh, toasted fennel seeds. <clears throat> fennel is giving ground black pepper. You can also use uh, fresh ground pepper. We have um, paprika. Uh, in paprika, you can use Spanish. You can also use smoked paprika that gives you a little bit more flavor uh, into the Italian sausage. Then we have way too much cayenne pepper. <laughs> this is uh, cayenne, you only need about a quarter of a teaspoon, so I put a little bit too much up there. Uh, and I don't really uh, like it too spicy, but we're making spicy Italian sausage, right? So I have to adhere to the recipe. Here we have, as you can tell, uh, a spice a lot of people put on a pizza, which is the hot red pepper flakes. Um, these come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. And then here at the end, we have actually coriander seeds. Uh, coriander seeds and the fennel seeds were toasted. Uh, the coriander is actually a seed you grow um, um, uh, cilantro out of. So you might actually have coriander seeds around in your kitchen too. This is a typical uh, spice to make sausages. Also in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, we use a lot of um, uh, coriander and uh, fennel for our sausages. Optional, I have some fresh garlic here. You can also toast or roast, sorry, roast the garlic in the oven and uh, add that. That would be a very nice uh, flavor profile to your sausage, but for our recipe, it's not in there, so we're going to keep that out. Uh, hopefully, you recognize this beautiful leafy green here. This is actually fresh oregano. Uh, when you rub it between pizza spices, so very commonly also used in Italian spicy and mild sausages. So this is oregano and this is going to be fresh. We're actually going to be uh, mincing this up uh, almost like a chiffonade technique. And then uh, here at the end we have uh, basil leaves. Basil obviously very well known for the Italian cuisine. These are fresh. Uh, we see a lot of students using the wrong greens for the pesto. So uh, please, I want to point out basil is fresh. The leaves um, have like a little bit of an edge to it. And we use it with mozzarella and uh, tomatoes. Uh, this is not bay leaf. Uh, this has nothing to do with any other dry spice besides dried basil. But for your pesto, please, please make sure that you always use fresh basil. If you don't get fresh basil, please call us uh, for substitutions. All right, then we go to our containers here in the back. <coughs> we have water here. You can't see this, but there's about three ounces of water in here. We have red wine vinegar. You could use a uh, different kind of vinegar. sweetness and a lot of dark color. So the red wine vinegar is actually perfect for the sausage. And then I have the pork casing, <clears throat> which you can see here. 
This is a uh, pork casing which I picked up at the grocery store actually uh, from the butcher uh, of a market. Usually I have to call uh, the butcher directly but they actually had it in stock and I just called the back and told the butcher, hey I want to make fresh sausage, do you have pork casing? And they were already washed. So what does that mean with pork casing? And they are usually put into salt to make them uh, shelf stable, you know, so to speak. They kind of uh, clean out everything. Obviously, they're washed, they're steamed, um, and then they put them in salt. So there's, there's usually a lot of salt around and in it, so you really have to wash them out good. How you wash them out is actually fairly easy. All you have to do is find one of the openings and put that literally over your faucet and turn on the water and let that uh, water wash through the casing, wash around the casing, and then slain in salt, like sardines, uh, you want to wash it off because if you use that, obviously all that extra salt is in your product. And are you tasting this? I don't think so. So if you make your casing, uh, if you make your filling for the casing, you want to eat or taste the casing, uh, the filling, to make sure that it has the right seasoning and not the casing. So I want to have no salt on the casing whatsoever. <clears throat> As I said, usually comes, the butcher has them in small plastic containers, lots of uh, salt in there, looks bright white. And um, the machine is something we're going to talk in a second, but I want to get going on the rest of the ingredients. So I'm going to move this cutting board here for a second. It's like a sweep swap here. And please, as always, let me know if there's any questions. All right, look at this, TV magic. All right, our other ingredients <coughs> are fat back, oof, and pork shoulder. Oh, sorry, pork butt. So the fat bag is actually the uh, pork skin or under the pork skin. Uh, it could come actually directly from the pork butt or from the shoulder, anywhere else from the pig, maybe some parts uh, of the uh, bacon area and so forth. So what we cut here is just the white stuff and this is all fat. And this is actually what we need in the sausage. So for all your health conscious uh, people, you need fat in a sausage. If I would only put protein, clean protein, only meat in there, I would not come up with a sausage. It would be very, very dry. Um, if that's even a terrine, again, if you even make meatloaf, you always put a little bit fat in there. We have two other techniques to incorporate fat in cooking, and that is larding and barding. Larding would be actually if I take a piece of meat and I put a needle through it and pull actually pieces of fat right through the meat. That's larding. There's a larding needle for it. Barding is if I take a lean piece of meat and I literally take bacon or fat and slap it on top of it and bind it. So during the cooking process, what happens with the fat? Fat starts melting. Where does it go? It melts into the meat. So any lean product, any lean cut of meat is going to get more moist, more succulent, more, uh, has a more of a mouth feel. Uh, it does not do anything to your cooking temperatures, so it's not going to make it medium rare or medium well, so that has nothing to do with it. You could take any piece of steak and wrap it in bacon, and come to think about it, that's actually a really good idea because who doesn't like bacon, right? Okay, let's go back to our sausage. <clears throat> so this is our pork butt, we're going to cut that apart in a second, and our pork fat. And now I want to show you the two finished products. There's two terms <coughs> you will learn in this class. Um, one of them actually I learned. Uh, I'm not, sometimes I learn even more English vocabulary. And uh, this is actually considered a breakfast sausage, but this is also called a chub. Um, what it is is we took the ground um, product and did nothing else than actually roll it up into uh, a larger piece of uh, roll in plastic wrap and then froze it. What that does is it makes it actually very easy for breakfast to cut patties. So all you would have to do now is cut this in maybe quarter inch, inch pieces, 
put it on my saute pan and saute it up. Uh, there's no casing on there and this is plastic wrap. So we want to unwrap it before you cut it and definitely not leave the plastic on when you put it in a saute pan because <clears throat> that would probably not be very healthy. Um, so this is called chopping or chop. <clears throat> and then on this side, we actually have a filled sausage. So when you look at this, this is actually the casing filled with the meat. So you can actually see the veins from the casing a little bit. And this is nothing unnatural. This is the most natural way you can make sausages. All that plastic stuff, the canvas things, uh, all the other fake uh, or, or um, produced skins are you know, great to use. But if you really want to make good sausage where you really don't have to worry about what you eat, get real pork casings and then make your filling yourself because then you know what's in there. All right, so we have all the ingredients. We have all the tools so far. Now we're going to go to our biggest tool, which is our uh, grinder. <coughs> Grinders come with different dies. And um, how a grinder works like is actually very easy to explain. I'm going to take this apart. We have, we have um, a um, thing which <laughs> pushes the meat forward that goes in here. We have a blade. Make sure that the blade is showing to the outside. This blade is actually cool because you can't put it in wrong because there's blades on both sides. It only fits basically one way. And then you have different dies. There's a large die, and there's a smaller die, and there's a plastic die. All right, so we're going to go with the large die now. And see how this fits in here so it doesn't move. And then I can put the cover on top. This is my first uh, step when I grind up the meat. The second step would be if I want the sausage finer, I could switch to the small die and then actually put the filling uh, funnel on there. What that filling funnel does is, besides falling off on me now, and again, is now pushing through the meat, through the funnel, and now it goes into the casing. How does it go in the casing? Good question, you may ask. This is actually very, very easy. All I have to do is put a little bit of oil onto the funnel and then scooch up that casing up to about here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a little knot in here. And as a little tip, you want to poke a hole in there. So you want to make a knot and you poke a hole in there. Why am I poking a hole in there? You will see when the casing gets filled with the filling, it actually pushes a lot of air through there. The air can't go anywhere. That casing doesn't let it out. So it's going to rip. If you poke a little hole in there, it pushes the air out until the meat hits it. And the meat is too chunky to get out of that little hole. And then it's going to actually start filling the sausage. We have a question. If you wanted to smoke the sausage, would you smoke the meat before casing? Uh, no, in general, most of the time, the smoking process happens after you made the sausage because you're actually also curing. So you have that salt and that sugar in that uh, meat mixture. So then the smoking process is another step of curing. So you want to smoke after. If I use smoked meat before that, uh, it's kind of defeating the purpose. It's already half cooked. So it would be a really odd uh, way to make sausage. All right. Okay, I'm going to have to put this back together. So if you don't have a KitchenAid attachment or not a KitchenAid, that's usually not a problem either because they also come in a hand cranky mode. I just want to make sure it works. All right. But first things first, we're going to have to cut up uh, about two pounds of that pork shoulder. Ah, sorry, pork butt. I keep calling it shoulder. I don't know why. There is a pretty big bone in there. And I'm actually going to cut a little bit less or a lot less than this because I really just want to show you the process. Let's 
So this is going to be enough for us right here for just show and tell. And um, we have to cut this meat up so that it's um, pliable through the machine. Make sure there's no bones, no grizzle, because that's going to end up in my sausage. So if you don't want to eat it, I wouldn't cut it in, right? Also, if you work with a grinder, make sure that you don't stick anything in there, which doesn't, uh, or what, which can break. Most of the time, at least my grandma always used a, a wooden spoon that holds up a little bit. If you do hit uh, that part on the bottom, which pulls the meat, other than that, you hopefully have a uh, tool which actually pushes down the meat. Or you're just very careful throwing all your meat down there. So there's some meat. I'm going to take some of that fat. That's a product good ratio. Uh, so the recipe calls for about two pounds of pork butt. That's probably much less than that, obviously. Uh, four ounces of fat bag. So the fat bag should be should be a good ratio to the meat. Maybe a fourth would be healthy for a good mix. Ah, that looks good. All right. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm actually also showing another trick. You want to put to not splatter all over the place. You can actually put some plastic in front of the machine. Doesn't take much to get this on here. And there's now different techniques. I saw different chefs do this in different ways. I saw chefs throwing everything in here. The spices, the, the, uh, the herbs, everything else. That is one way to do. I always grind the meat first and then actually you have two different ways how to do the spice mix. You can actually take a blender, put everything in there and then pulse it and mix it together because there's about a small amount of water in there. So it actually makes a really good sauce, sauce, and then you mix it under the meat or you rough chop everything and put it in. It's going to be a really hearty um, artisanal um, sausage because you're going to have a lot of bite to it. So, but let me grind up the meat first. We put a little bit of fat, the meat, fat, meat. Now, if this process takes long, you might want to put that bowl on ice. Now you're going to be glad that I only did a small amount because that would take me a while. Kick it up a notch. Run, run, run. That's Chef Susie's mixer. I don't want to. I don't want to burn it out. That's the typical thing what hot food chefs do to pastry chefs' uh, items. <laughs> Alrighty, everything is in. I take a little bit of wood thing here, so I get this all in. Oh yeah, it's all gone. Fantastic. I have all my fingers, nothing broke. It's a good day. Alrighty. Good. Look at this. You can clean this up. So this stuff gets fairly, well, I want to say warm, kind of. I'm going to move this aside a little bit. So you want to work rather quickly. So we have this uh, beautiful mix here. You see the fat pieces. You see the meat pieces. So this is all very, very nicely done. Okay. Now we're going to go to our spice mix. I have another bowl here. <clears throat> Let's 
So, I need a little bit more space here. Get all my ingredients back. All right. So, we said we had some salt. I take about half, as I said, the recipe is cut down in half. Sugar. Toasted fennel. Black pepper. Paprika. I actually said that with the red accent. I hope you heard that. So hope everybody is watching uh, FIFA Soccer 2. Oh, we have another question. Good. I was, what, I was what speed stuff. if you have the mixer on? Yeah, that's a good question. So the mixer speed, usually you want to have it no higher than medium to avoid any burnout of the motor, especially if you have a lot to grind. So the speed of the motor of the KitchenAid should probably be anywhere between uh, stir 2 and 4, but not much higher. I played a little bit with the speed so I can get this done faster, but you probably want to stay about uh, at, that, at that speed. If it gets too high and you have fat in there or some grizzle, it gets caught. It's going to actually make the dye hot and the blade hot, and you actually start cooking the meat while it cuts. Um, sometimes you even have some black stuff coming out there. That means something has been uh, fatted or there's some mechanical issues. You need to get rid of this stuff. This is considered either a chemical or a physical contamination of your sauces. You do not want to have any residue fat or any metal splinters or metal ground stuff in your meat at all. So please be very careful with that. All right, we have some water. About half. Then half of my vinegar. Smells yummy. All right. <coughs> I have my mix and I want to cut my um, basil. Basil, I'm going to do some chiffonade. I didn't make a whole lot, so I don't want to overpower. Now, because the oregano has so small leaves, I'm actually going to work this right in there in my chiffonade. So look how I do this. I'm going to roll this chiffonade with the oregano. It's kind of like making an oregano cigarillo. How cool is that? All right, knife cuts always important. So if you do it right, I can have a conversation with you. I know exactly where my knife is. I can look right at you, right straight at you. And uh, I cut that without cutting my fingers off. Because my knife runs right on my knuckles. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. All right, so this is like a chiffonade now, but I need it smaller. So I put my hand on the uh, spine of the knife. I like to do that over my lifeline. So I'm not doing it like this because then I don't know where my thumb and my, my pinky is. If I do it like this, I might actually cut into it. Look where the blade is. There's no way. If I have an accident, somebody pushes me, nothing can happen to me. If I have my fingers here, I'm not going to try that because I'm pretty sure I'm going to cut myself. So always put your hand all the way over Then nothing can happen. If your kid pushes you or if your husband comes by or your girlfriend hugging you, then you don't have to worry about cut, like slicing her or him. <laughs> all right, good. All this stuff goes in there. So this smells fantastic. Mm -mm -mm. So, we have all our ingredients in there, as far as I remember. I wish there would be smell of vision but there isn't. All right, meat, mix. As I said, again, you could have just pulsed that in a bar blender or with the uh, stick blender. That would have been perfectly fine. You see how that meat actually takes on that liquid fairly easy? There's only a little bit of vinegar in there. I don't have to worry about it to cook. You know, like vinegar cooks the protein. It's not enough in there. But what it actually makes with the water and with everything else, it makes it actually a nice pliable uh, farce. And that's actually really what it is. It's a farce. So it's a filling. 
Mm, my god, this smells yummy. All right. Now, I could put this away, let it uh, sit a little bit, put it in the cooler, but there's really no reason for it because I literally put it in casings and then I'm done with it. So I'm going to put that uh, mixer back together. <clears throat> now we have to change the die out. So we decided that this is pretty good looking sausage, so I don't want to cut it too much anymore. So I'm going to put it through the same size die. If I say I want to make breakfast sausage, I want to cut this smaller, then I would actually switch to uh, the smaller die. Also, if I have different casings, sheep, they will be thinner um, or in the small intestine uh, hog casing, then I can actually use the smaller uh, tube and make actually sausage links. So, not that you think I did this because there's nothing else. This is hog casing for sausages. This would be the tubing and smaller casing, sheep casing for uh, breakfast sausages, links, all right? That is a smaller die to make the sausage finer. So, I would just have to switch this out. In my case, I'm going to keep this die in. <clears throat> I don't want to take the die out. If I take the die out and there's anything else that needs to uh, mix or cut, you know, then it doesn't come out right. So I, I don't want to take the dye out. All right, so uh, I need something to catch that sausage. So I'm going to use the same. I'm going to use the same uh, plastic here. What did I tell you before? Who remembered? Make sure you make a. Be careful that this stuff doesn't dry out because if that dries out, you have a problem. So we have the casing here. This is always the trickiest. Actually, this is probably the trickiest part of the whole sausage making is making that knot in there. All right, so I made the knot. Take my knife, I pull this back a little bit. Make that hole as far in the front as possible sure this is all moves. Okay, I'm going to make this kind of sausage. I do not, um, I'm not going to bind it in between. You can, but you can also do this afterwards so you have less trouble. So we're going to actually make uh, one long sausage as, as much filling we have and, um, and then we go from there. So, put the filling on top. There's uh, actually usually enough room to pretty much put a good amount of filling right in there. And I know it looks kind of funny, but whatever you do on the top now, you can actually see there's some movement um, at the casing here. As much I hold back or as much I let go, as fatter or skinny as going to be my sausage. coming slowly here we go A slow process, as you can tell. Up a notch, 
see if we can get this going here. showing you how to fix a problem this seems to be something stuck in the die so we're gonna take this off we we'll see what's going on here because this is definitely too long so if this happens where the die gets stuck um, see uh, there's some fat in here some connective tissue which blocks the die then you have to actually clean this out because otherwise there's nothing gonna go through All right. So let me clean this quick here. Do not use hot water, because the hot water would cook it, and then it's really hard to get out. Cold water, rinse it. I'm kind of glad that this happened, so I can show you how to fix it. So now we show, see if there's anything else. Ah, here it is. See, this made all the difference, probably. Or let's hope. All right, we'll put it back on. I saw that there was something stuck because it started pushing the meat on the side of the die, and that is very un unusual. There's usually something happening. So let's see. Turn this back on. <coughs> Alrighty, here we go. Alright, so now it's stopping. You see there's a lot of air. We can later take a knife and cut this off too. I'm showing you, I'm going to show you how to also uh, make this, the brat. So if you, have, if you have enough, you actually twist it. And when you're twisting it, I have to pull some stuff down there. Uh, you actually use twine, butcher twine. Or you can also... Find it. And then you have your uh, sausage right here. So this would be a brat made fresh. Now I actually, when I start on the top again at the mixer, I would have to again Pull this, make a knot in there, poke a hole, and make another brat. So these brats you can uh, smoke now. You can uh, dry a little bit in your fridge. Um, or you can put them on the grill and cook. We have another question. What is a good sausage making reference book or guide? Oh, I'm so happy you asked me which reference guide to use. 
There's actually one fantastic book uh, I have used now for many years also during teaching. And uh, I have it actually right here. <clears throat> and uh, this great sausage recipe and meat curing by, uh, what is it called, Right Tech uh, Kutas, uh, shows everything from sausage making to curing to uh, uh, hang drying to bacon making. Anything you can possibly want, meat curing and sausage making is in here. I picked this up uh, one time, I think, at uh, Barnes and Nobles at actually the uh, outlet for like a couple bucks. So otherwise, I would probably put it, um, Google it on uh, eBay and, uh, not eBay, on Amazon.com and get it from there. That explains smoking, curing, all the ingredients, all the casings you can get. Also shows you a couple of tips and tricks I just showed you today. So to recap, sausage making, not very hard uh, with the right equipment. With a little bit of patience, you can make any flavored sausage you want. Um, you're in charge of what to put in there. Pork, uh, butt, and fat back are the main ingredients. Um, if you want to make a chicken sausage or beef sausage, then you obviously uh, you can change the recipe. Uh, chicken sausages usually use a little bit less fat. Um, and uh, beef sausages are usually cured or smoked a lot longer, more into like salami style sausages for uh, cold cuts. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching us today. If you have any other questions about uh, sausage making, please feel free to email us or um, just you know call me or um, yeah call me, and um, we will help you with your recipes and with your development. Other than that, have a great time um, at barbecues with your homemade sausages. Thank you so much. <laughs>